Legal Era is here with the founding and managing partner of M Mulla Associates Advocates and Solicitors Manik Mulla the firm was founded on June 7 2010 and it is on course to complete 14 years in business this year on this occasion we would like to know from Manik about the firm its journey thus far and the road ahead so let's begin this exclusive interview but before that i would like to thank manik for giving us the time so let's start you started as a partner in your family firm mulla and mulla and craigie blunt and caro so what led to you founding your own law firm M Mulla Associates Advocates and Solicitors in June 2010. So, a bit of a background. Uh, straight after my BCom, way back in 1995, I joined Mulla and Mulla as it's commonly called uh, as a trainee. I um, graduated my LLB from there, signed my article for my solicitors from there, and uh, I became a partner in 2006 after 11 years. And uh, in 2006, uh, the journey suddenly took a turn whereby a large pharmaceutical matter came to me, and uh, the main instructing attorneys of this matter were really uh, a firm called Kenny Dry and Warren in New York. It was a New York-based law firm which had referred the matter to Mulla and Munda. Uh, I handled that litigation for them. and i never thought i'd really leave the family firm but it so happened that they liked the way i work and uh, they had a sort of a need to form an affiliation with uh, one vakaria and vakaria in bombay so they approached whether you would like to join uh it was a huge opportunity from an international exposure point of view sure so uh I wanted to grab that, so with a heavy heart, I had to leave my family for. Okay. And and I then was a special Indian counsel with uh, Kerry Tran Warren. Okay. And it was joy that was when uh, I said, "Why not start off on your own?" It was literally just as simple as, "Why not start off on your own if you have a reasonable client bank? Why not start off on your own?" And that's how I, I, of course, spoke to a couple of people who I have confidence in, whose guidance I take, and uh, that's how the firm M Mulla Associates took birth. Okay. And I finally took the plan on Sir in June 2010 when we started over. It was just me, a secretary, and one junior at that point. Oh, okay. Your firm completes 14 years in business. So, what are the thoughts going on in your mind at this juncture? Uh, I'm grateful to an extent, satisfied, and of course, what the future holds, how to grow the business even more, how to create a legacy. Uh, those will be the principal thoughts right now. Increase the visibility of the firm. Project yourself more to the world. Sum up. I think those would be the thoughts going on right now on the 14th anniversary. Your firm has a range of practice areas. Uh, can you briefly describe the scope of your legal services in these core practice areas? So we have today four partners, three seniors, and one junior partner. Uh, as far as I am concerned, I do real estate, general corporate advisory. litigation arbitration and i also do have a reasonably robust practice in uh estate administration trust wills uh personal laws on inheritance uh my partner waiver who joined me 4 years ago specializes in media banking ipr and anuja who joined me 3 years ago uh she is also does a lot of real estate litigation and she brings to the table a practice on white collar crimes now okay. can't use very helpful because that was something we didn't really do and the junior partner was danish uh, 
does litigation, arbitration, and gender corporate advisory. So that's the gamut of services which we give to our clients. You represent clients from industries which are as diverse as hospitality, banks, FMCG, textiles, and others. Aren't these services uh, vastly different across the industries? How do you kind of... You know, it's... If you go back in time, I would say in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, you have the, the practice, if I may say, of these large companies was always to go to a single firm for all its matters. Uh, I remember way back then, even on your annual reports, which the companies just published, the name of the attorney's firm would always be there. But... Over a period of time, come the 2000s, uh, whoever may be the company, they go to different firms for different services. That's my, that's been my observation. Uh, they don't just go to one firm, so they may prefer a particular firm for IPR. They prefer another firm for litigation. They may prefer a third firm for income tax, a fourth firm for its labor issues. It's no longer firm specific. I find that clients are going more practice specific where they feel that a particular firm may give the best service in okay. that area of the law. So okay. it's not really on a diverse client base. All right. how, how the client wants to know this, choose their attorneys. Right. That's been my observation. Okay. So that's, that's your uh, explanation of how the services required, you know, Correct. work across these different Correct. industries. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, what are the guiding principles and the operational mantras, if we might call it, uh, of your firm? Uh, I would say there would be around three, four operational mantras, but as you rightly use the word guiding principles. For me, integrity is number one. Integrity, there is no substitution for integrity. Absolutely. Uh, the other one, as cliche as it may sound, attention to detail. The devil does lie in the detail. Attention to detail, because that itself reflects professionalism. Absolutely. Turnaround time, clients want answers quickly. They want their emails replied to within 24 hours for sure. So we okay. do have that practice that an email cannot be unresponded for 24 hours. It has to be responding to. Okay. And another mantra of this firm, uh, which I have possibly inculcated from day one is uh, interaction with the client, building a rapport with the client. Maybe even a little beyond just the legal work. You you make the client comfortable. Yes. It's, it's a sort of a personal relationship with the client. Sure. Which uh, also uh, is something I try to inculcate in the juniors and as well as in my past press. Okay. Uh, going forward, what is the firm's mission and vision? And uh, how do you plan to achieve this? Vision and mission would be definitely to create a legacy. Okay. To, uh, to build an institution which will remain in existence beyond me. Till today, Emula Associates has factually beat a word of mouth practice. So how do I plan to achieve it? It's been a word of mouth practice. Uh, having said that, we've always had our tables full of work by the grace of God. But I now have started to increase the visibility of the firm. Be more proactive in the visibility of the firm. No. Uh, because there's only X which you can achieve by word of mouth. You want to go on to the next level. You want to let the world know that you do exist and you're out there. So that would be my sort of uh, steps which I'd probably adopt or I am adopting 
to reach out to the world at large uh clients often describe you as a hands-on lawyer and as a settling lawyer we'd like to know your comments on this uh yes i am a hands-on lawyer i'm definitely a hands-on lawyer and that's why sometimes it gets very difficult because you're running a firm as well as you're doing all the legal work all the time uh i do like to see as many drafts which leave this form myself personally uh on all the matters in which i am the lead partner i am copied on each and every email which leaves the form or enters the form uh i like to be on top of my matters so i am a hands on lawyer i am not a very great delegator on my professional work and uh as far as the settling lawyer is concerned uh you know i look at it this way uh unfortunately uh we do have judicial delays in this country uh which can uh be quite detrimental to the interest of the client uh given the judicial delays uh what i always do is i have to draw the attention of the client to the cost benefit ratio of going to court today uh because litigation is not cheap sometimes uh the the uh results take years and years to come so one has to guide his client to settle a matter if possible and in the long run it turned up be more economical the client moves on with his or her life they can spend their energies and synergies on more positive matters than the litigation court which would paint for year, which would remain pending for years uh so i religiously follow them yes there are sometimes where you may have to litigate to bring about a settlement but uh, i definitely uh, unless there's a absolutely uh, if there's a case where you just have no choice but to litigate absolutely i do definitely always advise my clients to settle a matter okay yeah makes sense uh today technology has permeated all spheres of life uh, and the legal industry is no exception to this what is your take on the future of the legal sector in this time time of technology ai is coming you can run up it is coming it's coming years ago what is case law research or, or things like manupatra yeah west law what is it it is ai so ai has already been there it's now more in your face because of court hearings getting virtual so it's now more and more in your face post the pandemic uh you can't run away from it you have to adapt to it but uh, having said that i also feel that there are branches of the law where i'm not sure whether ai will ever substitute a lawyer and especially when you're dealing with a uh, you know family law inheritance law trust hmm AI, it's it's difficult for AI to substitute rock solid advice, uh, which an attorney would probably give his client, uh, because especially this sphere of the law which I'm talking about, and I'm sure there may be other spheres also, but this sphere comes to mind immediately. Uh, there's a lot of emotional baggage when clients discuss these sort of matters, and I don't think AI will ever have emotion. so yeah. there will be certain spheres of the law where ai will be limited but otherwise as i said earlier you can't run away from it you will have to adapt to ai it edit okay uh and here's i think the last question of this interview do you think that the current government policies are favorable for the legal sector in general and law firms like yours in particular as far as as you say firms like us in particular i see no problems with the present government policies uh they are definitely not prejudicial to firms of our size uh 
there of course the the biggest talk in town was the opening of the sector to the foreign law firm but i personally don't see that affecting a firm like emunda associate okay so manik uh, we've come to the end of the interview and uh, thanks so much for giving us the time and it's been a really nice interview thank you once again thank you and it's been my pleasure thank you so much